boy, do we have a show for you, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Retro Racing Managers League once again for round 11 of the Grand Prix 2 World Championship. 1990 Formula 1 racing is going to Belgium and the Spa Francorchamps circuit in wet and tricky conditions. This is going to be an absolute thriller. Jake Sanson here once again to bring you all of the action as the Grand Prix 2 World Championship in the Retro Racing Managers League brought to you by Stopwatch Hospitality, Clapham North MOT and GoBobby.UK is going to get underway very shortly indeed. And it's such a close qualifying session. Incredible to see all of the cars getting very close together now in terms of their raw one lap pace. And with that comes a very close grid. The top 16 cars covered by a second in qualifying here at Spa-Francorchamps. It really couldn't be much closer. All it takes is one or two mistakes from a driver and it really does make a big difference in terms of the order of the positions of the cars. So let's talk you through the drivers in their positions on the grid. It's Thierry Bootsen who grabs pole position for Williams alongside Ayrton Senna, who will be his teammate at the squad in 1991. Alain Prost for Brabham and Ricardo Patrese, the championship leader, fourth position on the starting grid. Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari lines up fifth alongside Nelson Piquet's Benetton with the two Tyrols of Jean Lacy and Heintzau Frentzen within half a second of pole position. Gerhard Berger in the McLaren is ahead of Stefano Modena in the second Ferrari. Alessandro Nanini in the second Benetton is alongside Mika Hakkinen in the second Brabham. Row 7 is Mauricio Gujamin in the Leighton House alongside Nicola Lalini's uh, Ligier. Andrea De Cesaris in the Lotus is alongside Ivan Capelli in the second Leighton House. Michele Alboreto lines up alongside Derek Warwick. That's Arrows versus Lotus. Eddie Chiva in the Ligier and Adrian Fernandez in the second Arrows. Then JJ Leto is next up in the Monteverdi. Then Michael Schumacher, the man who won the Go Bobbit at UK Cup qualifying race for Reynard in his first ever Formula 1 Grand Prix. Eric Bernard is next up in 12th, uh, 12th row of the grid, I should say in the Monteverdi Onyx alongside Martin Brundle, then it's Pierluigi Martini and Roland Ratzenberger in the second of the Reynards. So the cars lining up in position on the grid as you can see and the wet and greasy conditions are definitely going to make for a thrilling race. We saw many cars spin off in these conditions. We don't know how many of them are going to go in the Grand Prix but we know it's going to be very tricky and treacherous conditions as it was before. The Belgian Grand Prix of 1990 is underway and Bootsen gets a solid start. Senna looks like he's got a good one as well. But it looks as though Prost has got an even better one. So Senna's going to try and go the long way round. Bootsen just tippy-toeing his way through to the first corner. Not a lot of grip to be found around the course. So Bootsen just keeping it nice and tidy in the field. Very much understanding of the fact that there's only a slim chance of getting through that first corner. As Patrese in fourth position runs there alongside Alain Prost. And Patrese has to give best to the Brabham. He lets him go. So Thierry Bootsen in the Williams goes up Radion and along the Camel straight up towards Le Combe. Here's Nelson Piquet tucking up behind Ricardo Patrese. The Williams is there in fourth place, but Piquet's trying to get through into fourth position. The Brazilian's just confirmed he's going to be part of the new Arrows BMW project in 1991. It'll have a very South American flavour to it. As Thierry Bootsen runs ahead of Senna, but Senna is looking good for the move already. Out and Senna trying to get into the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix on lap one. He has a look, but has to think better of it. So Bootsen, Senna, Prost, Patrese, Piquet, Mansell, Alesi, Frensen, Modena and Hakkinen at the moment. And so it's five teams in the top five places, although Nanini is down in 14th. Berger is down in 11th position. Here's Frensen in the Tyrrell. Making his bid on his own teammate, Alesi, and Frensen does the business. So Alesi is going to have to concede there to his German teammate, Heintzauer Frensen, who has already won two races so far this year. He won at uh, Silverstone and he won at Hockenheim, of course. So here is Thierry Bootsen trying to shake off the attentions of Ayrton Senna. But Senna really wants this move to happen. Here comes the McLaren. Having a look, Bootsen's going to be side by side with the McLaren. Senna trying to draw level with Thierry Bootsen's car. But he has to hang back in the final reckoning. And Mansell is trying to have a look at the inside of Nelson Piquet's Benetton as they come through. But Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari upholding on as he led so much of the Hungarian Grand Prix, don't forget, a couple of weeks ago. So now he and the Ferrari team are getting their second win. They really want to get a decent result here at Spa. As Senna sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, only for Piquet to go faster still. And the first lap is without too much uh, carnage, but then we had that in the main Go Bobbit at UK Cup qualifying race earlier on as well. So it's going to be an absolutely fascinating battle so far. This is an absolutely sensational run as up the hill comes Ayrton Senna trying to shake off his main rival in the sport, Alain Prost in the Martini Brabham. 
And they come along the Camel Straight. Is Senna going to get a chance here? He's not quite close enough to Bootsen actually to have a go. So he's got to wait as Bootsen goes into Le Combe. Senna in second place. Prost is third. So the field knits its way through Le Combe. Still very slippery and greasy. Here's Alessi. He's slipped down behind Modena now. And Hakkinen tries to get by. And Hakkinen can't get through. The Chrome Leighton House, which is going to be brought back to its original colours at uh, Monza in Italy. So the battle here is raging as Berger can't quite find a way through. Berger's really struggling on his return to uh, Formula 1, having had his three-race ban from Silverstone, Hockenheim, and the Hungara ring. He's not riding... Oh, Prost has had a big accident! Prost has had a big accident in the Brabham, and his race is over. We have to see how he did that. But Alain Prost in the Brabham, he's having a miserable 1990 season. He's barely got a point on the board this year. So let's see what happened. He just loses the car completely. Airborne, big shunt. And a big accident for Alain Prost. The Brabham is out on lap two. What does you and Gale and the Brabham team have to do for Alain Prost to catch a break? It's a big accident for the Frenchman. And, uh, well, he's renewed his contract for the Brabham team for 1991. But he's just not having any joy at all in this 1990 season. He may as well sit out the way things are currently going. He's obviously fast, but he's just not getting any results on the board. Alessi is struggling by the look of it. Alessi's lost places to Larini and to Nanini and Gujamin. Oh, that's why he's slowing. A throttle problem. A throttle problem for Alessi. Oh, my goodness. That's a scary moment for Alessi as the throttle jams open. He's trying to get the car stopped, so I'm afraid for Tyrrell. Unreliability has crept in, and Jean Alessi is out of the Belgian Grand Prix on lap two, as Alain Prost was. So neither of the top-rated Frenchmen in this Grand Prix are going very far. So it leaves it all to Frensen, essentially, who's now made the move on Mansell. Oh, problems at the end of the lap. What's happened there? We need to have another look at it. But I think Mansell... Oh, Mansell and Frensen have come together. How on earth has that happened? And Frensen's up in the air. He's damaged his front wing. But Frensen and Mansell are having all sorts of problems. Modena has jumped them all. And has also got past Patrese and all of that. So we need to see it again. Look, there's problems as Patrese goes off into Mansell. And Frensen has nowhere to go but into the Ferrari. And then Frensen nudges Mansell, goes up in the air. And then Frensen tries to get back on the throttle to basically spin turn his way back into the race. So Modena is now up to fourth in the Ferrari. Larini's trying to dodge the carnage. But Bootsen and Senna are now battling for the victory. It's PK third. Oh, and there's Bernard. And he goes right into the... Side of the Minardi. The Minardi's struggling. So Martini's now got damage to the front wing. So the Minardi's going to have to pit in. Big problems for Pierluigi Martini. Senna's got the Williams on the run. So we need to get back to this battle. Here's Etten Senna. Trying to get his move on the inside of Thierry Bootsen. But he thinks better of it. As the Williams gets through into Le Combe. But there's big drama around this Belgian Grand Prix circuit. Oh, Frensen trying to avoid everybody with his damaged front wing. So Tyrrell's fortunes have completely gone up in smoke, unfortunately, after the first lap, the uh, first couple of laps with Alessi now out of the race with a throttle problem and Frensen with damage and he's got to negotiate the whole Belgian Grand Prix circuit with damage to that front wing. So very not good news from him as Fernandez has a moment there and Eddie Cheever gets around the outside and overtakes. So not great news at all for team boss Sam Hall and the Tyrrell squad, it's really not. A great day at the office from their point of view as Ayrton Senna continues to pressure Thierry Bootsen in the Williams. Third is now PK in the Benetton and he's catching them. But the greasy conditions definitely causing a little bit of a headache. Here's Mansell on the inside of Ivan Capelli and he thinks better of it. So no move for Capelli then and no move for Mansell either as Mansell tries to get his way up into P6 in the Ferrari. But the Ferraris are fourth and seventh, Modena and Mansell. So Ayrton Senna now closing in on Thierry Bootsen. Mansell tries again as he goes side by side with Ivan Capelli. And Capelli shuts the door. Capelli is going to be moving to the Monteverdi team, I believe, next year. Ayrton Senna dueling away with Thierry Bootsen. And he runs wide. And that's PK through. PK gets through. So Senna makes the mistake there. And Nelson PK on lap four gets up into second position. So the Benetton gets by. And Senna actually makes the mistake. Goes off and drops to third position. So Bootsen leads PK and Ayrton Senna with Patrese fourth, Modena fifth, then Capelli, Mansell, Berger, Hakkinen, Gujamin and Larini, who is battling away for 11th place with Alessandro Nanini. And that's Martin Brundle making a move on Roland Ratzenberger, I think. But he can't get by. Frensen finally makes it back to the pits, albeit right at the tail end of the field. 
Michael Schumacher is having a decent first Grand Prix in Formula 1. He's in 16th position now. Trying to work his way forward. But with Alessi out and Prost out, Martini and Frentzen are down at the back of the field. As they duel away for position. Here's Alvaretto. Trying to get back on terms with Derek Warwick in the Lotus. And as the field works its way through, they're just about getting through in one fell swoop. Here's Nelson Piquet back on form again in the Benetton. And his teammate Nanini is now having a go on the inside of Larini in the Ligier. And he gets by. So Nanini is through, no problem. Larini just keeps the door closed in time for the Cesaris to come by. And there is Ayrton Senna. Once challenging for the lead, now struggling in third place in the Burger King McLaren. And Alboreto trying to get through on Derek Warwick. Can't quite make it stick at the moment. Alboreto still trying to find a race seat for the 1991 season as the Cesaris who has got one. He's going to be at the uh, Italian Coloni team next year. He decided to come on board with them now that they've got Honda backing. And that's Larini. Larini's gone off the circuit. What's happened to Larini? He's come through the S's. And I think it's in the next corner when Larini in the Ligier is just going to drop it. Here he goes. Oh, too much throttle. And the wheel comes off. Larini goes off in very much the same way that we saw from the AGS in the original start of the Go Bobby at UK Cup race. So Nicola Larini, I'm afraid, has spun the Ligier out on lap four. This could be a race full of attrition here in this race. Bootson slowing! Bootson slowing the race leader! Thierry Bootson in the Williams gearbox failure on lap five. He's only just started lap five and Bootson's gearbox has seized. So his teammate Patrese is going to pass him. And on home soil, Thierry Bootson was leading the Belgian Grand Prix, but it is not to be for the Williams Honda driver. And Thierry Bootsen is out of the Belgian Grand Prix from the lead. That is heartbreaking for the local crowd. And for the Williams driver in particular, who was doing such a good job up to that point. But I'm afraid Thierry Bootsen is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. So now we've had Prost out of the race. The Rini out of the race. Alessi out of the race. And now Bootsen. So they're dropping like flies here already. What a move from Mansell. As he comes around the outside of Eddie Cheever into Eau Rouge and up Radior. Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari who's struggling to make up ground. He's clearly had an off somewhere. And is down to 15th place now. But what a move. As Schumacher is now battling with Adrian Fernandez, who's got a lot more experience. Schumacher catches the car and drops the 14th. But it's a great debut for Michael Schumacher, who really is showing why the Ferrari team signed him for 1991. He's dragged that Reynard in the greasy conditions a lot of the way further up the road than we thought he would. And there is Berger in the second McLaren. Now in P6 behind Capelli. Hackett in his seventh in the only Brabham left. Gujamin is eighth. De Cesaris and Warwick are ninth and 10th in the Lotuses. And then Nanini's Benetton, Alboreto's Arrows ahead of his teammate Fernandez. But Senna is in second place now with a clear track ahead of him to catch his three-time world champion colleague and compatriot Nelson Piquet, who leads the Belgian Grand Prix. And there's Cheever running wide, just about catches it before he goes off behind JJ Leto. And we're into lap six of the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix and already some big names have gone. Bootsen, Larini, Alessi and Prost on a damp circuit, but not a fully monsoon-filled wet one. As Cheever tries to close up on Leto, Mansell has caught up to his new teammate, Michael Schumacher, and they're having a terrific battle. And that's uh, Fernandez getting the move on Alboreto as they go through the bus stop chicane. Modena is in the pits in the Ferrari. What's going on there? He's damaged the front wing. So Modena in the Ferrari has damaged the front wing on this lap. So he's got to come in for repairs. That's big. Uh, that's very bad news for Ferrari. But they're obviously taking precautions. So Modena comes into the pits and drops down the order. But at least the Ferrari is, as a car, more competitive. They just haven't had any luck recently. Here's Mansell having a crack at Schumacher. Down towards Eau Rouge. He knows he can pull this move off. And he does it again. Schumacher tries to keep his foot in. But Mansell gets him around the outside. Up, uh, up Radion. Absolutely incredible. What an overtake from Nigel Mansell in two consecutive laps at the same place. So the Ferrari driver is absolutely charging his way through. And that's Alboreto. Oh, Alboreto spins the arrows right into the path of Mansell and Schumacher. And he's uh, stopped the arrows on the grass. He's got to try and find a way back onto the circuit. And that's a spin from Brundle. Brundle in the Minardi spins. And he spins again trying to collect it. And that's an off from the arrows as well of Alboreto trying to recover. 
So both Brundle and Alboreto really struggling to rejoin the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990. In fact, Alboreto is up against the barriers there. Oh, all sorts of problems for the Arrows. This isn't really endearing Michele Alboreto to the teams who want to hire a driver for next year. But on the wet grass, Alboreto is really not finding a lot of pace and grip. He has now recovered the car. But look at the gap between Piquet and Senna. 4.4 seconds and Patrese is 12 seconds further back. These incidents really have spread the field out a bit. But it's all about keeping a cool head and keeping the attrition rates as low as possible in this Grand Prix now because drivers are dropping out like flies. Here's JJ Leto on the back of Eddie Cheever. You can't make it stick again. He's doing everything he can to get by. But it just isn't working out from his point of view. That's Mansell! Oh, Nigel, you've got to be careful in the Ferrari. And that's going to be Schumacher back through. It's going to be Cheever and Leto on his tail. But Mansell is really struggling to hold the Ferrari on the road. We know it's fast over one lap. Mansell put it fifth on the grid after taking pole position at Hungary and leading the majority of the race. That was their best chance, really, Ferrari, of taking a Grand Prix victory. But there's a long way still to go. You never know what can happen. As the Cesaris is battling now with Mika Hakkinen's Brabham. Honda engine versus Renault engine. That's Gujamin in front. And here comes the move from De Cesaris trying to get through. I don't think he made it stick on uh, Mika Hakkinen. And Warwick spins. Warwick in the Lotus goes off. And he strikes the barrier. But he gets it in a position where that side barrier. They've obviously strengthened the cars uh, mid-season. On oh, PK. PK has spun. PK from the lead. Now he's gone off at the same place. We saw a lot of cars going off in the Go Bobbit at UK Cup. So Piquet's had an off. Let's watch how he's done it. He's just dropped the back end. Look, he desperately tries to save the car. But there's no chance. And Senna's going to go by and retake the lead of the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. Piquet trying to spin turn the car back again. But he ends up parking the car on the curbs, essentially. And I think we've had an off from Ratzenberger as well. Yeah, what, well, Warwick's dropping down. Ratzenberger's made it up into 15th place. Piquet's lost to Patrese. He's got through, and I think Capelli's going to go through into third place now. Berger's going to go through to fourth. And PK very nearly beached there. He's got to let the field go by. Gujamin, Hakkinen, De Cesaris, Nanini. PK tries to get going again in front of his teammate for next year, Fernandez. But Fernandez and Mansell are both going to get through. In fact, no, he doesn't. Warwick, what is Warwick playing at? He's reversing up the Kemmel straight. So he's got to be very careful about that one. But the Lotus gets going again. Patrese now sets the fastest lap of the race. A 2 minute 1.7 in the Williams, which is definitely a fast car. It's just a case of whether it can make the end of races. That's the biggest problem. And for Bootsen, he's got the worst end of the deal. Here's Leto battling with Chiva and the Cesaris. Spins the Lotus right in front of Alessandro and the Nini. But manages to put to a full 360 degree pillarette. And... Gets on again ahead of Fernandez in the arrows. So Adrian Fernandez, the Mexican, is now going to try his luck. And all, after all of that, Ayrton Senna comes. Oh, that's Schumacher. Schumacher spins the Reynard twice now, it looks like. So I want to see that one again because Schumacher, that's the first mistake he's made all weekend. Here comes the Reynard. Did he just clip the barrier? Yes, he did. Just a quick little rub. Tried to save the car. Spun and then got going on the throttle a little too early there. Michael Schumacher. So now he's got to reverse the car. And all that hard work has been undone for Michael Schumacher. But at least he is in a Formula 1 Grand Prix this time. His win in the Go Bobbit at UK Cup race has definitely given him plenty of uh, plaudits. Oh, Michael. He's just trying to spin turn the car. And there's so much wheel spin in that Reynard. And this is the problem. The, the surface grip is very minimal here at Belgium in these conditions. Bernard, meanwhile, is having a go at uh, Schumacher's teammate, Roland Ratzenberger. So they're having a great little tussle. Ratzenberger shuts the door. Frensen's recovered to 17th, I can tell you. So he is now getting back on with the task in hand of making a recovery drive. But the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix is already full of chaos. Who is going to get there? Well, not Berger. Berger spins at the same place that PK did. So a big off from Gerhard Berger in the McLaren. And that's going to drop him down the order. He had climbed as high as fourth behind Capelli. But now he is in the gravel trap. He's trying to get himself back on track. So a very tricky Grand Prix. But you do get the impression that whoever's going to win this one is definitely going to have earned it. Patrese now in second. Capelli in third ahead of his teammate Gujamin. 
But Ricardo Patrese, the championship leader, is just taking things ever so carefully. As Martini goes off in the Minardi. Well, that's not good news for the Italian. So Minardi still seeking another championship point. This is the kind of Grand Prix when the small teams could get one. But it is an absolutely sensational run up at the front now for Senna. He's got the lead he wanted earlier. But then we saw at the Hungara ring, he made three big mistakes and lost the car altogether. There is the chrome and blue Leighton House, which is kind of keeping itself together. Oh, and that's Hakkinen. Hakkinen drops the Brabham. A full 360 degree spin and gets going. And that's allowed Nanini to get by and it will allow De Cesaris through as well. I would suspect that we're probably going to see Fernandez get past as well. He does indeed go past. And oh, we've had another spin up the road. It's Patrese. patrese has gone off in the Williams. He's spun at the exit of the corner. Uh, Lacombe. So patrese has gone off. And Gujamin off as well. Well, wow, two drivers dropping it. Very greasy conditions. But first Patrese, then Gujamin. And Nanini goes off trying to avoid Gujamin's car. So Patrese gets going again. Gujamin's off. Fernandez trying to recover, but Nanini is way off the circuit. So the Benetton's had a big problem. So we've had Gujamin off, we've had Nanini off. And Gujamin is now trying to recover the Leighton House. And Berger goes off! Berger overshoots! That's the second off for Gerhard Berger in this race on lap 9 of 44. So how on earth is this race going to play out as drivers continue to struggle for grip here at the Belgian Grand Prix? And Berger does get the McLaren going again, but it's a very dramatic race for everybody as Gujamin now recovers, but he's in 19th place in the Leighton House. And, uh, well, what can you say? A very dramatic case of affairs. As there's Patrese running in third position. So Ricardo Patrese doing a grand job as he runs up at the front end of the field. And he storms his way through. He's in third place, but he's now 25 seconds behind Senna. He was steadily chasing him for the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. And that's all come undone. With Senna leading. Ivan Capelli second. Third is Patrese. Fourth is De Cesaris in the Lotus. Fifth is Fernandez now in the Arrows. And then you've got Hakkinen in the Brabham. PK in the Benetton. Ahead of Mansell's Ferrari. Here's Frentzen. And he's attacking Eric Bernard in the Monteverdi for 14th place. So that's what all these dramas and catastrophes have done. They brought Frentzen back into play a little bit here in the Tyrrell. Uh, behind Mansell's Ferrari, we've got Nanini in the Benetton. And then we've got Chiva in the Ligier. Leto is 11th in the Monteverdi. And in 12th place is Modena in the Ferrari. Frensen's up to 13th. He's got the move done on Eric Bernard. With Ratzenberger in P15. Brundles, Le uh, Brundles Minardi sorry, is in 16th ahead of Gerhard Berger in the McLaren. Then it's Alboreto's Arrows. 19th is Gujamin. And that's Nanini going off. And he gets off right in front of the Ligier of Eddie Chiva. Chiva's car is destroyed. So Eddie Cheever in the Ligier is out of the race. And I'm afraid that's both Ligiers now gone from the Belgian Grand Prix. What does that mean, though, for the rest of the race? Because the Cesaris has now gone off. He spins off in fourth place in the Lotus. As uh, Hakkinen and Pique try to avoid it. But what's happened to Nanini? He's out of the race now as well. So Nanini, too much damage to the Benetton after the impact there with Cheever. So Nanini's car is rescued at Radion as the Cesaris continues in the Lotus in 8th position though. So he has lost places. But cars are just dropping out of this Belgian Grand Prix like flies. The marshals are doing a great job to clear everything away. But all of that has promoted Berger to 15th, Alboreto to 16th. And there's Mauricio Gujamin. He's now in 17th place ahead of uh, Derek Warwick, Michael Schumacher and Pierluigi Martini who is now in 20th. Just 20 cars still running the Belgian Grand Prix and we're only on lap 11 of 44. So we're about one quarter distance and we've already lost six cars. So we could have a very minimal amount of cars finishing the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990. But Senna leads in the McLaren. Capelli second, Patrese third, Fernandez is fourth, Hakan in his fifth, PK is sixth in the Benetton ahead of Nigel Mansell's Ferrari. De Cesaris in the Lotus is in 8th place. Modena in the Ferrari is back into ninth place. And in 10th at the moment is the Monteverdi of JJ Leto. And that's Ratzenberger. Ratzenberger goes off in the Reynard. So Berger and Alboreto both get by. But Ratzenberger is able to get the car back on the circuit. Careful on the throttle, Roland. He rejoins behind Gujamin. So Ratzenberger gets the Reynard back on the course. So 
their first Grand Prix, and the Cadbury's Reynard continues around the Belgian Grand Prix circuit here at spa Francorchamps. Here's Ivan Capelli in the Chrome Leighton House. <laughs> they have informed me that they will be returning to the regular blue at the Italian Grand Prix. There's Frensen. A bit of a lock-up for the Tyrrell, but he is there in 11th place. But Frensen's still trying to work his way forward with the mighty power of the Tyrrell Honda. Unfortunate for him that he's ended up having that off and damaging the front wing because the Tyrrells were very close together in uh, qualifying. They were only half a second off the pole position time as well. So there's plenty of opportunities for them. They have the most powerful car on the grid, but you've got to remember that when you're racing against people like Senna and PK and Prost and Patrese and Bootsen, the two young whippersnappers, Alessi and Frentzen, are still learning on the job. They had some good races, but I think a lot of the teams have started to catch up to their pace now. The car may have the most power, but mechanically and in terms of grip, a lot of the other teams have caught up. Here is Fernandez trying to shake off the attentions of Hakkinen, PK, Mansell, and then Andrea De Cesaris is a few seconds back as well in the Lotus. But it's a four-way scrap for P4. Senna leads, Capelli, Patrese, and then a few seconds back to Fernandez. Hakkinen, PK, Mansell, De Cesaris, Modena, and Leto. And Ivan Capelli is in the pits. Now, this is a pit stop that's scheduled. So a scheduled pit stop for Ivan Capelli. It's the first pit stop of the race, essentially, as Patrese sets the new fastest lap of the race. A two-minute 1.3 there. But this is the first scheduled pit stop of the Belgian Grand Prix of 1919. It's Capelli that pits in first. And it's a 10.4 second stop. Not a great pit stop, actually, from the team. And they will bring Capelli in again later for a second pit stop. But what's Senna doing? Well, he's got another nine laps of fuel left in the car. So he could go on a one-stop strategy here. But it's essentially up to Senna what he chooses to do. Capelli rejoins in third position ahead of that squabble. Martini... Oh, very close to the edge there in the Minardi for Pierluigi Martini as he tries to keep the car going. You could hear the chirrup of the tyres as Alboreto pits in from P15 behind Gerhard Berger. And Berger, by the way, has caught up to the back of Martin Brundle with Eric Bernard in the Monteverdi very much in sight as well. So the Monteverdi is going very well here at Spa. Here's Berger taking on Brundle. And Berger in the McLaren is no match for Brundle in the Minardi. He gets through no problem at all and makes up a position as Hakkinen drifts wide down at the bottom end of the circuit. Up into the corner with no name. And Fernandez is catching Ivan Capelli. Capelli may be on fresh tyres, but they are cold tyres. And in these very slippery and greasy conditions, it's easy to go off when you're trying to get uh, tyre temperature back up to optimum. And that's PK battling away with Hakkinen, trying to shake off Mansell. Patrese is out of the race by the look of it. What has happened there to Patrese? And he's kept going, but something very strange happened there with Patrese. I wonder if he got stuck in gear or something. But let's have a look again at what happened to Patrese. Yeah, he's just... It, it almost seemed like the engine just stopped and then came back again. A very bizarre incident for Patrese. Never seen anything like that before. But it, it just seemed as though the engine started to die. And then it came back again. So Patrese is very lucky to get away with that. Here's Capelli trying to shake off Fernandez, Who's looking at his first ever podium here. And Gujamin runs very wide in the Leighton House. So Senna still leads to Patrese. But Capelli has got a massive queue of cars developing behind him. And then Fernandez in fourth. Hakkinen in fifth place. PK and Mansell. So five cars, all scrapping over third position. Capelli at the helm. And then Fernandez, Hakkinen, Piquet, Mansell. But there's Ricardo Patrese, second position in the Williams at this moment in time. Still having a good run on lap 13 of the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. Senna, Patrese, Capelli, Fernandez, Hakkinen, Piquet, Mansell, De Cesaris, Modena and Leto. And here comes Hakkinen, trying to storm up the outside of Adrian Fernandez in the arrows. This is where horsepower really comes into play. And Mansell's trying to make these move on P8. The Ferrari a little bit more superior than the Benetton. And we leave at the wrong moment there, essentially, as Senna nearly gets it wrong. But Mansell does not get the move on P8 in the end. He has to concede to the three times world champion. And that's Warwick. Warwick in the Lotus has spun it. Not for the first time either, but he's up on the curbs there, so he's going to be careful getting the car back on the road, which he manages to do. And it won't be long before Senna's coming up to lap him. On board with Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari. The Ferraris are 7th and 9th. 
And Mansell is going to continue to lead the Ferrari team into 1991. He feels he's got a good plan for next year. The car is already apparently much better in 1991 than it was in 1990. So he's got plenty of reasons to be confident as Berger dives up the inside of the Monteverdi and makes the move stick. Here's Ayrton Senna, ahead of Riccardo Patrese and Ivan Capelli. Then Fernandez, Hakkinen, Piquet, Mansell, De Cesaris, Modena, Frentzen and Leto. So De Cesaris still swarming around alongside the Ferrari now, this time of Mansell. You can see that the Lotus has changed its uh, commercial partner for the mid-season. They've kept the yellow, but now they've got yellow pages on the Lotuses. And that's a move... From Hakkinen on Fernandez, it didn't work. So Patrese, uh, sorry, for PK Manson and the Cesaris all had to hang back there. So Capelli is still third, trying to get rid of Adrian Fernandez, the Mexican, who will remain with the Arrows team next year alongside Nelson PK, but that's going to have a real Latin American flavour, the Arrows BMW team next season. And apparently Fernandez's title sponsor, Takate, is going to have a major involvement in the branding of next year's car as Frentzen pits in from P10. That's Berger getting back past Martini, I think. Or is that Senna? No, that is Senna lapping Martini's Minardi. I do apologise. As Frentzen, Brundle and Gujamin have all pitted in together. And that should bring Ratzenberger, Alboreto and Schumacher into play. Although it's not going to bring them onto the leaders. So Senna leads the Belgian Grand Prix. He really needs a victory mid-season. He's having a really tough battle here at McLaren as Ratzenberger locks up into the hairpin. So a very solid effort as out of the pits comes the Minardi of Brundle and also the Leighton House of Gujamin. As Ratzenberger closes up on them, he might have overtaken one of them had he not locked up at La Source. Where, speaking of La Source, that is where Ayrton Senna is on track. 30 laps to go in the Belgian Grand Prix. As Ivan Capelli duels for third place with Adrian Fernandez again. Fernandez has to back up. And that's brought Hakkinen, P.K. Mansell and De Cesaris onto the tail of the arrows once again. As Fernandez continues to work his prowess. He's so good with tyres, is Fernandez. That's where... Oh, Gujamin goes off again. So Gujamin goes off the circuit and rejoins. And Alboreto gets through into 16th position. So Alboreto gets through. Schumacher's now on the back of him. So that'll be interesting between Schumacher and Gujamin. Senna still leads the Belgian Grand Prix. Prost out. Alessi out. Bootsen out. And then, of course, we also have uh, Nicola Larini and Eddie Chiva, the two Ligiers out. Chiva having a collision with Alessandro Nanini, and that's what put the outgoing Benetton driver in. Mansell is in the pits in the Ferrari, but that is on course and schedule as Alboreto loses ground to Gujamin. So let's see if we can pick up Mansell's pit stop. All looks like it's going according to plan for the Ferrari team. He's the first one, so he's hoping for an undercut, although Leto is in the pits, and so Mansell has to wait for the Monteverdi to go by. That's a problem, because that's going to cause him a little bit of a headache there. So Berger goes through, and he will take ninth place away from Mansell. But here comes PK, making his bid on Mika Hakkinen's Brabham. Capelli is still there in third. PK has another think about it. Dives up the inside of Hakkinen. And he then has to yield. There's no way through. But Senna is still having a good race. Here's Michael Schumacher battling away with Michele Alboreto. That move was never really quite going to happen. I think Schumacher was trying his luck a little bit there. But Ayrton Senna having a solid smooth rhythm at the moment. As he battles in the McLaren to get further away from Ricardo Patrese in the Williams. Who's had a very strange race really. A mad couple of moments. Here's JJ Leto trying to close up on Frentzen. And Bernard is there in 11th place having a little bit of a gearbox related issue. Certainly sounded if something was not all well in the Monteverdi. Oh, and that's Capelli. Capelli has shunted. Capelli's had a big crash from third position. What's happened? It's the same place as before. We've had accidents there. And oh, goodness me, that's a big impact. So there's no question, I'm afraid, that Ivan Capelli is out of the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990. And just like Alain Prost's accident, that was a bad one. So Ivan Capelli, I'm afraid, is out of the race for Leighton House with Gujamin way down the order. And Patrese comes into the pits as Bernard spins off in the Monteverdi. He's got to try and keep that car going. So Patrese pits in from second. Capelli is out from third. And the Monteverdi of Bernard goes off, but he's buried it well into the gravel trap there. So Leto and Frentzen getting by, no problem at all. And I think we've got Hakkinen uh, having a little bit of a moment there because Fernandez and Piquet are both coming into the pits together along with Patrese. 
Alberto Fernandez and Pique. The Mexican and his new teammate for 1991. They'll both be at the Arrows team next year, which will look very different, we're told. Thanks to the support. And Frenson's out. Frenson's out of the race. What's happened to him? Gearbox failure. So no points for Tyrrell. Another dramatic race then for Sam Hall and the Tyrrell team. They've had speed, but they've not had reliability here at Belgium. So big problems then for Heinz Howard Frenson as the Tyrrell team is now out of the Belgian Grand Prix. Bernard is trying to get the Monteverdi back onto the road. So what is Eric Bernard up to? Just trying to get it gently through the gravel as Ayrton Senna goes by to lap him. He was going to inherit 10th place at one stage there from Capelli when he had his accident. And Piquet. Has Piquet had an incident? I think Piquet's gone off the road somewhere. Oh, he's recovered from the pits, I should say, as Fernandez now battles with Berger. And Piquet's got a great chance of a move here, but he's had to back off the throttle. So Piquet in the Benetton. Still battling. Oh, and here comes a move from the Ferrari of Mansell. Mansell's trying to come by. So Mansell's got the long shot on Piquet and should have the inside line for Lecombe. So Mansell surely is going to get through into 8th place, which he does at the expense of three-time world champion Nelson Piquet. Mansell is up into P8 in the Ferrari. So it's Senna, Patrese, De Cesaris, Hakkinen, Modena, Berger, Fernandez, Mansell, Piquet and Leto. That is the top 10 at the moment in the Belgian Grand Prix. Here's De Cesaris. A good solid afternoon's effort so far from the Yellow Pages Lotus. And De Cesaris is coming into the pits on this lap. You can see that the tank is running short. But at least the fuel is nowhere near as hungry as it was in uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix. What about Senna? Where's he on track? He's still leading. He's only got a handful of laps before his own pit stop. But De Cesaris is going to come blasting down the straight and into the pits as you see now. So he's going to temporarily move into second place I think just as he comes alongside Patrese. Not quite. So Andrea De Cesaris in the Lotus pits in from third. So Hakkinen inherits the place. But De Cesaris will obviously want to have a good pit stop from his own. De Cesaris is actually going to lose a lot more time than he would like here. 9.6 seconds. The big question is where is he going to be on track relative to Berger and Fernandez? Oh, and Mansell spins! Mansell spins in the Ferrari. I think there's been an incident with Fernandez. So let's have a look at the replay. Mansell closing up on Fernandez. And what's happened? He's closed up on the Mexican. And let's see. Oh, whoops. He just hops over the curbs. Spins the Ferrari. It's the lightest of lub taps with the barrier. So Mansell can get that going again. But uh, having already had an incident, he really doesn't need another one. So Mansell does get going again. Warwick in the gravel again. So... One Lotus is battling for a podium. The other one is just struggling to stay in the race now. As Senna goes by and continues his run in the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. But what about Warwick? His car is on the track trying to get going again. And spun turn back onto the circuit. But is he going to get on in front of Bernard? Yes, he is. So Warwick recovers in 17th. And now the other one's gone. That's the Cesaris going off. So the Cesaris now spins at Lecombe. There goes Fernandez through. PK and Mansell should go through. No problem. PK spins. PK spins in the Benetton. Where's Mansell? Oh, he has recovered from his spin. So PK spins off. Gujamin now side by side with Martin Brundles, Minardi. And now Ratzenberger and Alboreto have a chance to close up on Gujamin. A crazy Belgian Grand Prix. So many incidents. As Modena spins in the Ferrari. Oh, he needs to get that back on the road because they're in fourth place with a decent finish on the cards. So Modena spins the Ferrari back onto the road. And has he done that? Yes, he has. He hasn't even lost the place to Berger. So Stefano Modena, very lucky indeed there not to lose the place to Gerhard Berger. As now Michael Schumacher has a look at Alberetto. De Cesare is nearly going off again there. But that's how much rain has come down here over the course of the weekend. As Mika Hakkinen in the Brabham just tiptoes his way around in third place behind Ricardo Patrese. It can't be long before Senna makes his pit stop. Two laps of fuel left in the car, so he's probably got two more laps out on the road as well. As Patrese wobbles. Oh, did Patrese catch that? Senna still leading. Patrese just about saves it. I want to see a replay of that because in Eau Rouge and Radion, he loses it mid-corner at Eau Rouge. At Radion, he just about blips the throttle and catches the car. So fortuitous that Ricardo Patrese could hang on to that one. 
with Mika Hakkinen right there in third position in the Brabham. So Hakkinen's going to try his best to move forward. But a very tricky situation now in the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. As uh, Patrese in second is trying to shake off the Brabham. Here's Gujamin trying to hunt down the Minardi of Martin Brundle, who's got a genuine chance of a point here. No wonder Benetton wanted him for 1991. He's uh, showing a clean pair of heels, is Martin Brundle. A lot more so than his teammate Martini did mid-race. But Brundle is just keeping it going. Here's Patrese in the Williams. Keeping it running in second place as Fernandez drops it. Oh, big shot in the arrows. And that's game over for the Mexican. He got airborne. And that's all it takes. So I'm afraid Adrian Fernandez's brilliant race fighting for the podium is over. And the Mexican is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. What a shame. He was having an absolutely inspired run. And I can tell you that Gujamin has just made the move on Martin Brundle's Minardi. So Gujamin will take 10th position away from Fernandez, not the Minardi of Martin Brundle. There is Gujamin, currently in 11th position. But you look back and you see the likes of Brundle, Ratzenberger, Alboreto, Schumacher. And they're all having a terrific scrabble in front of Ayrton Senna, who is the race leader and surely is going to be coming into the pits on this lap. He's 47 seconds clear of Ricardo Patrese's Williams with Hakkinen bearing down on him in the Brabham. The top three teams, all with Honda engines. Fourth place is Stefano Modena in the Ferrari. Not bad at all from the Italian. No wonder Modena has been snapped up by Lola Ferrari for next year. They didn't have room, apparently, for him in the Ferrari works squad, but they wanted to make sure, of course, that the factory team still held a connection to Modena. They may need his services again in the future. And so they put him in their Ferrari customer team, Lola, uh, run by Tom Cairns, so Stefano Modena could be a very useful driver in 1991, that's for sure. And Hakkinen goes off in third! Oh my goodness, Mika Hakkinen! A big bounce through the gravel, and now spins the car around, trying to get the car back onto the road again, in third position, gathers up the Brabham, and somehow retains third position without damage. So a big moment there for Mika Hakkinen as the Brabham gets sideways, but he recovers still in third place. Meanwhile, it looks as though Ratzenberger and Alboreto are having a little incident of their own as uh, Senna is lapping them. So Senna comes into the pits. In fact, this is Ayrton Senna's one and only pit stop. So it's a one-stop strategy for the McLaren. As he continues on his way, Patrese in second, Hacken in third, then Modena, Berger, Piquet, De Cesaris, Mansell, Leto and Gujamin. A long stop for Senna. But then 11.6 seconds, that's basically to fill the tank to the brim. And Schumacher brings the Reynard into the pits as well. So this is all going according to plan for Ayrton Senna and McLaren. They lead the Belgian Grand Prix. And surely this time, this is their race to command. As Senna leaves the pits, still with lapped cars in around him. So no problems at all. Patrese in second place in the, in the Williams. Is still trying to get as close as he can to the McLaren. Hakkinen in the Brabham still there. De Cesaris nearly loses the Lotus there in P7. So a very close run thing. But the Italian is still trying to keep that car very close to the front end of the field. Here's Senna. Still running well. Straight out of the pits. And uh, the car is going beautifully. So Ayrton Senna running well. Modena in the pits in the Ferrari. Now that's an important stop. So Modena lets Berger go through into fourth place. I'm not sure if Berger has already made his uh, first pit stop. But Modena is on a one-stop strategy in the Ferrari. Hence why he's been able to make progress through the field to P4. But Berger, PK, De Cesaris and Mansell should all go by. In fact, there goes Mansell past the pits. And the two Ferraris will be together on the racetrack. And I think Mansell will just be given the opportunity by Modena to get through. There goes Mansell. And Modena slots in behind him in eighth place. So, nice work there. Good choreography from the Ferrari team as Manson and Modena are now 7th and 8th place. But this man, Ayrton Senna, is leading the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990 on lap 20. So, uh, an earlier stop than perhaps expected for Senna. But he clearly felt this is a good opportunity at a good moment while the rhythm is there in the car. So, Senna in the McLaren continues to lead. We're on lap 20 of 44 and we're about to complete it. So, we're just approaching half distance in this race. And Ayrton Senna's McLaren still going strong. Ratzenberger pits for his one stop. Martini pits for his one stop. And then Bernard and Schumacher are at the back of the field. They are the ones down at the uh, uh, tail end of the field now. Schumacher running 
provisionally was running at the very tail end, but that's because he's had his pit stop. Here's Hakkinen, third place in the Brabham. A very solid run from the Finn as he continues on his way. But this is an absolutely stellar performance. Senna leads by 21 seconds to Ricardo Patrese in the Williams. Hakkinen is third in the Brabham, 10 seconds back. Berger is fourth, Piquet is fifth, and then De Cesaris, Mansell, Modena, Leto, Gujamin, Alboreto, Brundle, and Warwick, with Ratzenberger, Schumacher, Martini, and Bernard, the only other runners in this race, because we've lost Fernandez, we've lost Capelli, Frensen, Nanini, Chiva, Bootsen, Larini, Alessi, and on only lap two, we had that big accident from Alain Prost in the Brabham. So Senna leads the way. 21 seconds is now the gap between himself and Ricardo Patrese. There's Mika Hakkinen. A further 10 seconds back from the Williams. But Senna is running a solid race at the moment in the McLaren. Doing an absolutely stellar job as he controls the pace. 20 seconds, 20.9 20 seconds to be exact, ahead of Ricardo Patrese. It looks as though the race is settling down a little bit now. But still, there's not a lot of grip for these drivers. As Patrese goes wide, catches the curb. Well saved by the Italian, I have to say. Ricardo Patrese came very close there to bidding the Williams, and he just saves it. A very reliable pair of hands is Ricardo Patrese, a very talented race driver, and it's great to see him still running on to the Williams. Derek Warwick loses the back of the Lotus, not for the first time today either. And Warwick is trying to spin turn the Lotus, manages to do so as uh, Ayrton Senna in the McLaren goes by to put a lap on Derek Warwick. And next up is going to be Martin Brundle in the Minardi, which is running in 12th position. So Ayrton Senna completes lap 22. That is half race distance. Oh, sorry, he's into lap 22, I should say. So this is the half distance point in the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990. Eric Bernard is there in 17th position down at the back of the field in the Monteverdi. Look how slow Patrese's having to be in the... Williams as Brundle drifts off the circuit. Hakkinen is into the pits from third, but Brundle drifts off the road, I'm afraid. So not great news for the Brit. And Berger is into the pits as well. And I'm fairly sure these are one-stop strategies for Hakkinen and Berger. It is indeed. Hakkinen is being released. And he will now go to the end of the race. Berger in the McLaren is going to be in the same boat. So Hakkinen will rejoin in third. And Berger will rejoin in sixth, I think, behind the Cesaris. Unless Mansell gets the chance to go through as well. So PK is uh, in firing line of Hakkinen. But Hakkinen recovers in third position, no problem. And that's Brundle still trying to recover and bring the Minardi back onto the road. But it's not particularly easy when you're beached in that particular part of the circuit. So he's trying to find some grip at the moment. This is the difficulty. And he's really struggling to find a way out of that gravel trap. If he can't find a way out, then the Minardi is going to be beached. And he's going to be out of the race. But he now reverses out onto the circuit after Bernard goes through. So Martini and Bernard have both managed to pass Martin Brundle. But the Brit is stuck in the gravel. He's reversing. He's trying to find reverse gear. He's trying to get back into the race. He has to let Hakkinen's Brabham and Piquet's Benetton go before he can return to the circuit. But he really needs to find the throttle. He's still reversing at this point. Surely you'd think that... Uh, a chance to get back onto the racetrack would be afforded to him. Oh, and Ratzenberger drops the car. Oh, goodness me. That's not good news from Roland Ratzenberger as he drops the car on the way through the chicane. He's now going to have to find a way to get that car to the pits as Patrese passes the scene of Ratzenberger's demise. And Martini is approaching the scene. Yellow flags are waving as Ratzenberger, I think, has managed to... Oh, no, he spun turn the car. So Bernard gets past him. Ratzenberger... He can just about cross the grass and recover back to the pit. So Ratzenberger is going to be last but one. That man is going to be Brundle. Who is still desperately trying to get that car out of the gravel trap and back onto the road. Which he has now done. So we're at the half distance point of this crazy 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. And we've got some great battles. Here's for fifth. Gerhard Berger's McLaren. Andrea De Cesaris in the Lotus. And Nigel Mansell in the Ferrari. As Brundle has only just got back on the road and he's very nearly throwing it off again. I wonder if that's gravel coming out of the airbox of the uh, side of the side pods. Uh, because that was very difficult to hold on to. Here's PK. Now on the back of Mika Hakkinen. 
Oh, and PK just catches the curve. He was lucky to save that at Radion. And now Hakkinen's third place. Not under threat at that particular point on the course. So Senna, Patrese, Hakkinen, PK, Berger, De Cesaris, Mansell and Modena. Here's Mansell. Side by side with the Cesaris in the Lotus. This is going to be a good opportunity to come by. He swarms one way, he swarms the other. And Mansell's going to try and throw it up the inside line into Lake Combe. But the Cesaris is not going to give him the space. So Mansell has to yield and hang back in position. But it's still out and center who leads the Belgian Grand Prix. Can he keep it together? Well, Berger's about to lose ground to De Cesaris. De Cesaris gets into fifth place. So the Lotus going well. And that's PK. PK goes off. A big spin there, and that's going to be very hard to recover for the Brazilian. So PK goes off the road. Ratzenberger's joining the scene of the incident. And there is PK back on track. So Ratzenberger is going to be able to come around, but De Cesaris is having a look up the inside of PK for position. And uh, PK recovers. So he is still in fourth place. He was lucky to get away with that one. A big spin for PK, but he hasn't lost his place. As now Berger and Mansell try to lap Ratzenberger's Reynard. And Mansell now gets his move through. No problem at all there. So a very tricky situation. Senna leads. Patrese in second. 18.4 seconds back from the 1988 world champion, who is still bidding to become world champion in 1990, but he's really got to work at it. Patrese second. Hakkinen third after his pit stop. PK fourth, De Cesaris is fifth in the Lotus, and there's Patrese taking a lot of curb as he comes off of Le Combe. And then uh, sixth place behind De Cesaris is Berger in the McLaren, the former championship leader. This man is now the championship leader, Ricardo Patrese in the Williams. And that would be a very incredible achievement if he could win the world title. He's been trying for a long, long time. He's been in Formula One since 1978, don't forget. He has yet to win a Grand Prix this year, Ricardo Patrese. But he's definitely having a solid season. Even if he gets one win, it could end up being a year very much like 1982, eight years ago when uh, KK Rosberg won the title despite only winning one Grand Prix that year. Mansell and Berger are having a great tussle now for sixth position as Patrese runs around the outside of Michael Schumacher's Reynard and Piquet goes off again. This time he does lose the place to De Cesaris and he's very lucky that Berger and Mansell were a few car lengths back. So Piquet is still there but uh, Berger and Mansell are trying their best to come through. So PK running a solid race in the top five, but he's just lost a big chunk of time. He was leading, don't forget, in front of Senna before that big spin. And that's another spin. It's Alboreto in the arrows. So Alboreto in the sole remaining arrows, which has climbed all the way to the dizzying heights of 11th, but uh, still not really looking competitive for points unless there's a big moment up in front and Senna nearly bins the McLaren. That's how tough it is for grip out there. That's how difficult this circuit is to drive in the greasy conditions. Even Ayrton Senna drops it on the way out of Eau and up Radion. Was so lucky to catch the car on the tarmac because that would have thrown him off the road and out of the race, no problem at all. There's Gujamin in the Chrome Leighton House, still going well. As that car continues in 10th position, Gujamin having worked his way back up into a points paying position after his own spin earlier on. <sighs> Remember in the GoBobbit at UK Cup qualifying race when we said that Michael Schumacher hadn't put a wheel wrong all race and we meant it. Now in this race, everybody has put a wheel wrong. I'm fairly sure that there isn't a single driver that hasn't had a moment of weakness. Here's Martini on Bernard. But Martini lets Bernard go. As Gujamin loses it out of the final corner. It's a full 360 and he should get that going again before Alboreto comes through. Alboreto in the arrows is just coming out of the bus stop. There he is. So Gujamin again. Quite fortuitous that he spins the car. But doesn't lose the position. That's Patrese. Patrese in the Williams. He bins it from second place. He was catching Senna. He was catching him. And that's why. He was just pushing too hard. And the championship leader, Ricardo Patrese, makes a big mistake in the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix with a chance to win it. He's now going to really struggle to get out of that gravel trap in that position. He's also facing the wrong way, which isn't going to make it easy. But Williams want points here in Belgium. Patrese was challenging for victory. Bootsen, of course, has already retired from the lead with a gearbox failure. So Ricardo Patrese is trying to get the car going. That's going to put Hakkinen in the Brabham into second place. There he goes. 
and De Cesaris in the Lotus is going to come by into third position as well. So for Ricardo Patrese, it's terrible bad luck as the Williams is still there at the scene. And Patrese is trying to figure out what to do next, essentially, because that car is virtually stranded. Mansell goes through into fifth place. Berger goes through into sixth. Modena in the Ferrari goes through into seventh. And Leto in the Monteverdi is going to go through into eighth place. Gujam in ninth. And uh, up to tenth is going to go Alberetto in the Arrows. And then you've got the likes of Derek Warwick in the Lotus, Schumacher in the Reynard. So you've really got to focus if you want to get onto the points of this race. There goes Guggemin. There goes Alboreto. So I'm afraid from second place, Patrese in the Williams is now down in 11th place as he recovers. There goes a Williams victory. That is so disappointing for the whole Williams team. And I know that team boss Topher Smith is going to be very frustrated about that. He works very closely with uh, Patrick Head and the team, but they've decided jointly to part company next year. Topher Smith will become the captain of the Zepta Jordan Ferrari team. A new team for next year that's bought out of the uh, remnants of the Eddie Jordan racing team in Formula 3000, which they have vowed they're going to continue in uh, 1990, in Formula, uh, 1991, sorry, in Formula 3000. So PK is a minute off the lead, but thanks to Patrese's demise, is now in fourth place catching De Cesaris. So PK does have a chance at the podium after all. Here's Hakkinen's Brabham, still running second place, and that's Mansell! Mansell in the Ferrari, spins, spins twice, and that's Berger going off. Berger spins off in unison, and Modena goes off, but Mansell's car is stranded in the middle of the road, that's the problem. And there goes the Monteverdi, Berger spins, Modena gets by, and that's one of the Reynards going off, that's Ratzenberger. So Mansell is trying to recover. Berger doing so likewise as they synchronise spin around the course. And Mansell gets going just before Gujamin and Alboreto come around. So Berger drops to 7th, Mansell drops to 8th, and they all continue. But Modena is now 5th, and Leto in the Monteverdi is in 6th position. That is the highest the Monteverdi has ever run in 1990. Totally incredible scenario we've got here. There's Ayrton Senna leading the Belgian Grand Prix. And Mansell in the Ferrari, dueling away with Berger. He runs too deep. Nigel Mansell goes off again. This time it's a big one. And the Ferrari just needs to keep going. They could do with points. They need points in this uh, Belgian Grand Prix. When a lot of the big names have retired, they need to keep themselves in the hunt here. And Mansell has dropped to 11th now behind Patrese. So this is not good news for Mansell. There goes the Minardi of Brundle to unlap himself. But Derek Warwick in the Lotus can't be far away. There is Ayrton Senna coming up to lap Mansell in the Ferrari. And there is Mansell getting going again. So Senna gets by without any hesitation at all. And Senna laps Nigel Mansell's Ferrari after he's off. So this is not good news. And that's Brundle. He's off again. How's he done it? Let's have a look. We're looking at Martin Brundle in the Minardi. It's exactly the same kind of moment. And he's just gone off at uh, a similar corner to where he went off before. So I'm afraid Martin Brundle, the car is clearly not handling particularly efficiently. As Martin Brundle isn't getting a lot out of it. Now Mansell is tucking in to the, wee, uh, to the slipstream of Senna's McLaren. Look how much of a speed advantage you gain in the slipstream. Mansell has to back off the throttle a little bit there. But in the slipstream you gain so much. And Mansell trying to unlap himself now from Ayrton Senna's McLaren. And they've hit each other and Senna's gone off! Senna's got damage! Senna's got damage to the car! Oh, I don't believe it! Mansell absolutely determined to get himself back into the race. And he's forced Ayrton Senna into the pits. Let's watch again. As Senna has the moment with Mansell. And I have to say, a lot of that was Mansell just getting a little bit hungry to unlap himself. That one could well be investigated. Senna is lucky that he's got 50 seconds advantage on Mika Hakkinen. And let's look, he's just bandsied up the inside. You can barely even see... Uh, Senna's car at this point but this one really deserves a second watch or a third watch even I should say as Mansell goes through Senna goes to the pits let's watch again now you can see here that Mansell has dived to the inside line and he just second guesses himself Senna's trying to give him space around the outside but Mansell with lack of grip drifts into Senna Senna goes over the curbs damages the front wing of the car bounces back into Mansell's Ferrari that pitches Ferrari's uh, that pitches Mansell into the uh into the wall and Senna has now got to come into the pits to clear up his damaged McLaren. 
So an absolutely furious Ayrton Senna comes into the pits, will repair his McLaren, and this is absolutely appalling luck for the Brazilian, but essentially now he takes a two-stop strategy. But everyone else has had such a difficult race of it that he's going to get in and out before Hakkinen even comes through. Look, there's Hakkinen in the Brabham, and he's in second place. He's miles behind Senna even now. So Senna will get back out on track. They're going to give him a little bit more fuel, I think, as well as a fresh set of tyres. And in a way, that has actually eased the pressure off Senna a little bit. So he can hop and scream at Nigel Mansell all he likes as Derek Warwick is trying to unlap himself. And he's done so! Well, he nearly does. Senna reminds him that, you know, I'm, I'm the race leader. You don't need to unlap yourself, thanks very much. And that was a close call. And Ayrton Senna, very lucky there to get away with it. A little bit uh, eager for Nigel Mansell. So a thrilling opportunity here in the Belgian Grand Prix of 1990. Senna leads, Hakkinen and second, the Cesar is third from Piquet, Modena, Leto, Gujamin, Berger, Alboreto and Patrese. And Alboreto makes his bid on Gerhard Berger and that's yet another incident and Berger's lost the wheel. Berger's lost the rear wheel. So Berger is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. Let's look at that one again. From on board with both drivers, here's Alboreto getting his move on Berger. And he just forces him off and Berger loses the wheel. Oh, and there goes Patrese through past both of them. That was very close indeed. He nearly hit them both. So let's watch on board from Berger. Here it is. And there goes the wheel. Oh, big problems for Gerhard Berger. I want to see it on board his cockpit cam, actually, because that is game over for the former championship leader. Here we go. We've got Alberetto on the inside. Alberetto is not willing to concede the move. And there goes the wheel. He just catches it on the wrong angle on the curb and it shears off the car. How did Patrese miss them? That's the other big mystery in this one. So let's ride on board with Ricardo Patrese. We'll see what he saw as he made his move past these two. Look, Berger goes in the air. Patrese comes through. I think actually he just dodged the wheel. But a very crazy moment. And I'm afraid for the McLaren team, that's one down and one to go. Gerhard Berger... He's out of the Belgian Grand Prix. He will not score points. And I think Modena's had a moment. Yes, Modena has spun at the first corner. So Modena's overshot at the first hairpin. And he's now trying to get the car going again. But I think he's... Is he having gearbox problems there? Trying to get the car moving? He's got cars trying to pass themselves back. So Patrese's up to seventh place as a result of this. Modena's got by. So has Alboreto. Oh, sorry, uh, Alberto's got through into 8th place, I should say. Modena's ninth, So up into 10th place again is going to be the other Ferrari of Nigel Mansell. Mansell gets back into 10th position. So 11th is going to be Warwick now. 12th will be Schumacher. 13th will be Bernard. 14th will be Martini. 15th will be Ratzenberger. And 16th will be Brundle. But I'm afraid Gerhard Berger is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. Goodness me. What a race. Absolutely astonishing. So Senna leads the Belgian Grand Prix. And look at JJ Leto. What a race he's having in the Monteverdi. He is in fifth position. That's going to give them a massive boost. And David Yunt and the team can be absolutely delirious with this. With JJ Leto, he just keeps going round. He's had a moment already in this race, actually. So it's uh, a bit of a shock. But the man in front of him is the man he usually races wheel to wheel with in the Go Bobber UK Cup. And that's Patrese off again in the Williams. Now, in essence, the car looks like it's in one piece. But he's gone off at a very precarious part of the course again. That's where Prost went off on the second lap. So Patrese, very fortunate to keep going. But Modena's going to get by. He's already got through. Mansell in the Ferrari should get through as well. So that's a big moment. And here's De Cesaris. He's caught up with Hakkinen now. So De Cesaris has caught Hakkinen in the Brabham. As uh, Mansell is now right on the back of Patrese's car, I'm told. De Cesaris is trying to come by past Mika Hakkinen and PK is not a million miles away either. Here goes De Cesaris making the bid and Hakkinen slams the door shut in front of De Cesaris. That's not going to work and PK is right there now in fourth position. So here's Mansell and he's battling with Patrese for ninth position. Mansell in the Ferrari, Patrese in the Williams and there goes Hakkinen down to third as De Cesaris in the Lotus gets through into second place. So Hakkinen is now third, PK is fourth, and De Cesaris in the Lotus is up at the second place. 
So here comes Nelson PK trying to get through. Whoops! And PK goes off the road. Can he catch the car? No, it's pirouetted around, so he's going to go off the road. Now, can he get going before Leto comes around? Leto could get into fourth place here. What an amazing Grand Prix this is. It, it, it just keeps throwing curveballs at us. So PK recovers. Where is JJ Leto? He's coming towards PK's car, so PK's got to get going again. There he goes. So PK recovers in fourth place. So he keeps his position, but he's now a good half a minute behind Hakkinen's Brabham. But there's Patrese battling with Nigel Mansell's Ferrari still for ninth position. Mansell is still right there behind him. So a great little battle for two of the top drivers who have had big incidents in this race and are now trying to make their way through. De Cesaris in the pit for his second pit stop. So De Cesaris in the pits for his second stop. So anybody on a two-stop strategy, this is now their window to make the pit stop. Well, this is an absolutely... Fantastic run. Nine seconds in the pits for De Cesaris. He'll get out behind PK, I think, because PK has not come into the pits yet. But PK does need a pit stop. And he'll be coming in on this lap, I can tell you. So De Cesaris actually will get out onto the circuit in third place. So PK will still have a pit stop to come. Gujamin is now in fifth. He's in the pits. He's just made his overtaking move on Leto, I do believe. And Leto... Oh, Leto's got a throttle problem. So a forced pit stop for Leto, but he was coming into the pits on this lap anyway. So Leto versus Gujamin in the pit lane now. Gujamin's ahead of Leto, but he had a throttle issue, so they can reset the car, get him going again. And Gujamin, unfortunately, has now made a permanent overtaking move on Leto. But Leto is still in the pit in the points. So that's good news from the Monteverdi crew's point of view. Modena's now sixth behind Alboreto in the Arrows, who's up to fifth position. No one would have thought Alboreto would be P5 in this one at any point in the Grand Prix. But Alboreto's experience, despite his spins and despite his moments, he's kept the car going. And he's still there in the reckoning. Just 16 cars running the race. 10 out. Gerhard Burgers, McLaren. Fernandez in the Arrows. Capelli in the Leighton House. Heinz-Howard Frentzen in the Tyrrell. Alessandro Nannini's Benetton. The two Ligiers of Eddie Chiva and Nicola Larini. Thierry Bootsens williams from the lead. Jean Alessi in the Tyrrell who has won twice this year already, and Alain Prost in the Brabham, the reigning world champion who crashed out on lap two. So Ratzenberger hovering behind Gujamin's Leighton House. As he continues on, Gujamin running in seventh place now. Leto is running in eighth. I'm intrigued to see how many others need to make a second pit stop as Bernard gets out of the way and lets Hakkinen go. Hakkinen in second position. No more pit stops for the Finn. So the Brabham should go to the end of the race, no problem at all. De Cesaris has just made his pit stop. Here's PK into the pits for his. So the Benetton crew are ready to service him in fourth place. And I think Alboreto should be coming into the pits very shortly as well in the Arrows. So PK going to work and the Benetton crew. It's a 9.4 second pit stop. Where's Alboreto? He's into the pits as well. So that negates that one. So Modena is going to be promoted up into fifth position for Ferrari. And then Mansell will go up into 7th place, I do believe. Uh, no, he's still battling away with Patrese, isn't he? And there's still a few seconds off the pace. So there goes Modena in the Ferrari. 10 seconds in the pits for uh, Michele Alboreto. Gujamin goes by as well into P6. And where's Leto? He has recovered behind Mansell, I do believe. So let's see what's happened to JJ Leto. Yep, there he is in 10th position. So he's still on course for a point. But there's Mansell in the pits for his pit stop. And uh, Patrese is in pit road as well. So both Patrese and Mansell pitting together. And there is Mansell getting out. There is Patrese getting out. So it's as you were between those two. So Leto goes up into eighth place again. Patrese and Mansell are fighting for the last two points in the race. Warwick is 11th. Schumacher 12th from Bernard, Martini, Ratzenberger and Brundle. And that is the entire field. Absolutely fantastic. What a sensational Belgian Grand Prix this is. And it's still got a long way to go. We've still got 13 laps remaining. Senna's doing a grand job in front of Hakkinen. 22 seconds clear. De Cesaris is in third after his pit stop. So the Lotus is still looking good for a podium. That will give Ryan Ferris plenty to cheer about. Especially after this week they announced that Renault is going to be the factory engine supplier to Lotus. They're going to team up in a deal that's going to make both teams very profitable apparently. They've been with Lotus before Renault. 
but with Williams going to Porsche, they decided let's team up with Lotus and make a strong partnership for the future. So Lotus could have a very prosperous uh, future ahead with the Renault team. There goes PK lapping Martini's Minardi. He did a much cleaner job of it than some of the others have done lapping back markers today. Hakkinen still running well in second place in the Brabham. Finally poised in case anything should happen to the McLaren up front. Hopefully that is not going to be the case. For Hakkinen, a solid drive here in second place in the Brabham. But yet again, a championship leader very much in struggles. And that's De Cesaris. He spins the Lotus from third position. Fortunately, he doesn't hit anything, but that could cost him third if he doesn't get on the track in front of PK. So he's trying his best. Gets the car stopped. Spin turned. Don't get too much wheel spin on the car. It's, this is the thing. Once you've lost the car, you've got no grip in the tyres anymore. And De Cesaris is trying his best. But there goes PK through into third position. De Cesaris gets going again. And he should rejoin in front of Stefano Modena. So Senna is your leader. Hakkinen second now. PK third. Then De Cesaris, Modena, Gujamin, Alboreto, Leto, Patrese and Mansell. There's Stefano Modena in the Ferrari. And he drops it out of the corner. Gujamin's going to get past him. And Modena it needs to get going again quickly. Otherwise Alboreto is going to get through. Too late. There goes Alboreto. So Modena recovers. Oh, Stefano. Gotta sort this out, mate. Spin turns the car. Gentle on the throttle. Gentle, gentle. And De Cesaris goes off again. Well, that's a big one. De Cesaris, having already gone off on this lap, has gone off again. So with Modena spinning out of P5, De Cesaris now spins out of P4. How did he do it? Oh, he just lost it on the exit how on earth did he not damage the front end of the car there i think he just managed to lock up on the brakes and get the car stopped in the nick of time but there goes gujamin through into fourth position there goes alberetto coming through now so alberetto gets by and i think modena will be the next one. Oh, that's patrese patrese gets past stefano modena in the ferrari but the cesaris in p6 and the lotus is trying to get back on the road and he does so just so the Cesaris recovers. Sixth position. Here's Hakkinen. Now closing in on Michael Schumacher. And not for the first time today. Brundle in the Minardi. Spins and drops it big time. At Le Combe. Oh, and that's uh, Schumacher getting crossed up. What happened there to Schumacher? I think he was trying to avoid the incident. I thought Senna had a moment there. Let's ride on board with Michael Schumacher. He's going to see Brundle in front of him have his moment. Spins the car. Probably a little nervous about what's going to happen. And he goes off the road. And let's hack and get through. So there's Brundle. The Minardi having gone off the road. Brundle should get going again without too many difficulties. Just gets the car straightened up once more. And there goes Schumacher. Oh, just drops it down to the bottom of the hill at Lafagne. So that is a big moment for Schumacher. And that's going to drop in behind Martini's Minardi. Behind Ratzenberger in the other Reynard if he's not careful. He's got to get the Reynard going again to drag it out of the... Gravel trap, but if he just keeps going, Schumacher, he might still get a point from this Belgian Grand Prix. He's only 13th in the Reynard, behind the two Monteverdis of Leto and Bernard. Leto seems to have had an off somewhere because he's now down behind Warwick. Having had his pit stop, he shouldn't be that far down. So Leto's having an issue somewhere. I want to try and pick that one up. Ah, oh, Leto, there he is. He's had an off, definitely. Let's have a look at his lap time, and that will confirm it. There you go. He's lost about eight, uh, 17 seconds with the off on that last lap. And Alboreto nearly drops it. So Alboreto in the arrows in fifth position. He can't afford to keep making these mistakes. There's some good points on the run here for arrows. Amazingly, throughout all of this, there's only one team with... Uh, sorry, no. Now there's two teams with two cars in the points. Lotus, because you've got the Cesare sixth and Warwick in tenth. And the Ferraris are next up. And Senna again. So nearly drops it out of Radion. And with 11 laps to go, out and Senna leads the Belgian Grand Prix. But they're all flirting with the limits here. They're all struggling because the grip is still minimal. Derek Warwick in the Lotus just about catches a drift wide. 33 laps done. 11 to go in this most incredible, phenomenal Belgian Grand Prix. With so many twists and turns through the telling of it. It is absolutely astonishing. So this is going to be an absolutely astonishing run for Senna if he can finish this off. And it will be his 
First Grand Prix win since Phoenix. Brundle again! Goodness me, that Minardi is strong. So Brundle, down in 16th, goes off again. And I'm, I'm fascinated to know what his uh, reasoning for what's been going on here in the Minardi is going to be. But that car certainly doesn't look particularly grippy at this moment in time. He did struggle with it in the Go Bobby at UK Cup race as well, actually. So it does kind of tally that he would struggle with it again here. 10 retirements, 16 cars still going, but all sorts of chaos in between. But we now sort of have a relatively reasonable order compared to what we might sort of expect. We've got Senna leading, 12 seconds ahead of Mika Hakkinen's Brabham. Uh, Nelson Piquet is third from Mauricio Gujamin and Michele Alboreto in the Leighton House and Arrows cars. There is the other Lotus. Derek Warwick is in 10th place. His teammate Andrea De Cesaris is currently 6th. And then we have Riccardo Patrese in 7th in the Williams, although he was 2nd at one stage and would have inherited the lead from Ayrton Senna. Oh, there goes Schumacher! Well, somehow the Reynard has not broken into a million pieces from an accident like that one and Schumacher can get going again. Which he does. So the Reynard continues with Schumacher at the wheel. And he recovers in 13th place. There's another off up the road though. Something else has happened. Oh, I think there was a green flag for Schumacher's uh, car actually. I thought that might have been a separate incident. But no it's not. So Senna leads. Hakkinen, PK, Gujamin, Alboreto, De Cesaris, Patrese, Modena and Mansell in the Ferraris. And there goes De Cesaris yet again. But yet again somehow... The car is not completely damaged. Has he kept the engine running? Yes, he has. There go the Ferraris. They are now 7th and 8th, Modena and Mansell. And there goes the Cesaris, back into the race in ninth. So the Lotuses that were looking at 2nd at one point are now ninth and 10th. A big mistake from the Cesaris. So this is a really difficult situation. Here's Mansell. Just starting to creep up on teammate Modena. Now the Ferraris are both in the points, so, so far so good. They just need to hold on to it for another 10 laps. And then it will be a double points finish for Ferrari, which is definitely going to help in terms of their Constructors' Championship bid. They're not going to win that, but they're certainly going to score points, which definitely, ultimately makes a big help. And it puts Nigel Mansell on the scoreboard if he can finish the race. 10 laps to go here at Spa, and it's going to be 9 as soon as Senna completes the bus stop chicane. But there's a reason they call this man the best driver in the world, and it's because he has so many times in 1990 led a Grand Prix. He led all four of the first four races. Unbelievably, he only won one of them, and that was the Monaco Grand Prix. And he was leading in Canada as well when the engine blew on the last lap, literally at the last corner of the last lap as well. And that is what gave victory to Jean Alesi in the Tyrrell, who was already getting geared up for a brilliant second place finish. But... Uh, Ever since then, it's been a bit of a tricky situation, really, for the cars in the field. Here's Mika Hakkinen's Brabham. Ricardo Patrese in the Williams. I thought he was going to drop it again then. And he's under pressure from the Ferrari pair of Modena and Mansell, who are trying to move into the top six. And they've got Gujamin and Alboreto a few seconds up the road, who are desperately trying to hang on to things as well. So there's still a lot that can happen in these nine laps as cars continue to thrill us around the Belgian Grand Prix circuit. Lots of drivers going off, lots of big moments in the race, but essentially cars are still able... Oh, Ratzenberger, big problems for the Minardi that he's passing. That's Martini. So the Minardi's are 15th and 16th now anyway, but Martini has an engine failure, and that's a big, big blow for the Ford engine there. And we've heard, of course, that Ford, as a works engine, are going to pull the plug on their Formula 1 project at the end of 1990. It'll only be Cosworths from now on, as Ford, for the moment at least, pulls out of Formula 1. But, uh, yeah, big problem there for Martini, as uh, the, the Williams passes the scene of the incident. The two Ferraris are coming through there as well, Modena and Mansell. But Pierluigi Martini with an engine failure at the Belgian Grand Prix, and the car is on fire on the way through. So that is a big moment for Martini. The marshals go to work to clear the car away very quickly. But now we have just 15 cars running the Belgian Grand Prix. Martini is out, so is Berger, Fernandez, Capelli, Frensen, Nanini, Chiva, Bootsen, Larini, Alesi, and Prost. And there are the two Ferraris. Still going strong in 7th and 8th place. They had a chance to be on the podium earlier on today, but both of them have had incidents. 
So Ayrton Senna now just 13 seconds ahead of Mika Hakkinen. He's had a couple of moments of his own today. Don't forget that he tripped over uh, Nigel Mansell's Ferrari when he was lapping him and uh, ended up damaging the front wing. He was so lucky that uh, he was able to get into the pits at that point. Here's Mansell getting his move on Modena. And the Ferraris switch positions. I don't know how much of that is tactical and how much of that is racing. But Mansell moves up past Stefano Modena in the two Ferraris. And so Mansell is up to seventh. Modena is up to eighth place. And Brundle again having a moment at La Source this time. So on lap 37 of 44, eight laps remaining in the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. There is still a heck of a long way to go. And Ayrton Senna knows that he can lose this in the blink of an eye. He's just got to keep it together. He can't afford to drop it. He's in his zone at the moment. He's in his rhythm. So from his point of view, Senna's just got to keep it neat and tidy. Brundle lets Nelson Piquet lap him. Alessandro Nanini, of course, was out of the race earlier on when he had a collision with Eddie Cheever. Nanini spun the car initially, brought it back onto the circuit and ended up getting a massive smack in the backside from Eddie Cheever. And both drivers were out on the spot. No way that they could continue. There's Hakkinen's Brabham. Still running well. Second position. So a fabulous bit of racecraft for Mika Hakkinen in the Brabham. He's gone very well indeed today. Had his moments, but ultimately he's still running solid in second place in the Brabham. PK has has recovered after some incidents. He's had two or three big spins in this Grand Prix with the minimal amount of grip and has managed to get his way back into third place ahead of Gujamin and Alboreto. Patrese, Mansell and Modena are all still trying to recover after incidents of their own and the Lotuses of De Cesaris and Warwick have had a number of incidents in this Grand Prix as well. Leto and Bernard in the Monteverdis, they're 11th and 12th. The Reynards of Schumacher and Ratzenberger are 13th and 14th. And Martin Brundle, who's had about 750,000 spins in this Grand Prix, has dropped to 15th place and is now two laps off the lead. Alberetto. Fifth position, seven seconds back from Mauricio Gujamin. And in fifth position, the, the Arrow's doing a very good job. And I can tell you that the footwork branding is going to be dropped from the Arrows next year. They're going to be bringing in more sponsorship money from... Adrian Fernandez is back at Tecate, the Mexican brand. And so Fernandez and the uh, Arrows team will undergo a massive transformation in appearance. And there goes Patrese off again in the Williams. And he actually spins the car back onto the racetrack. Now, what about the two Ferraris coming through? Manson and Modena should be able to avoid that, no problem. They do indeed. And there goes De Cesaris in the Lotus as well. Warwick won't be a million miles away from that either. There they go. And there goes Senna. He laps the Williams. Well, that's unfortunate and rather degrading. There goes Leto. There goes Bernard, I think, as well. Very shortly indeed. Yep, there goes... Well, there goes Hakkinen in the Brabham to lap Patrese. He was battling with him for position. Oh, that just adds insult to injury, doesn't it? As the Williams desperately tries to recover. And Patrese drops to 11th position. That's great news for Monteverdi, though. They get into the points again. So PK in the Benetton running in third. Behind Mika Hakkinen in the Brabham. PK third in the Benetton. Fourth is Gujamin. And that's Senna locking up at the first corner at La Source as he tries to lap one of the Lotus cars. I think that was uh, Derek Warwick who ended up causing him a bit of a headache. And that's Mansell. Spins at the top of Radiant. Catches the car. What a recovery. But the Cesaris gets through, as does Modena. So Modena's through into sixth. The Cesaris is through into seventh. And by the time they get to the end of the straight, Warwick might well get through into eighth place. But Mansell, lucky to recover in the Ferrari. So Senna, Hakkinen, Piquet, Gujamin, Alboreto, Modena, De Cesaris, Mansell, Warwick, Leto. Some great performances so far. But still a long way to go as Ayrton Senna rightly knows he's had victory stolen from him on the last corner of the last lap this season. At the Canadian Grand Prix. Nothing is sure until you've crossed the finish line. And now Senna is only 7.2 seconds ahead of Hakkinen. Hakkinen's catching the McLaren. Thanks to Senna's little mistakes here and there. So Nelson Piquet still trying to keep himself in the hunt. And still doing a fair job in third position. Ahead of Gujamin in the Leighton House and Alboreto in the Arrows. But Elton Senna in the McLaren. There he is having a solid run. He just can't afford to let things get too overwhelming. He's just got to keep things together. It's a very, very 
sorry situation for the guys chasing him, but... Oh, it's Schumacher! A good catch there at Radion. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. So it could be an absolutely thrilling situation for the competitors. But what an absolutely brilliant run from Michael Schumacher in the Reynard as he continues on his way. He's making a very solid debut. He was up in 14th before all the drivers uh, spun off the road. He then spun off himself, of course, but he showcased his talents earlier on in the Grand Prix. And with his very mature drive in the Go Bobber at UK Cup race earlier. Oh, hello, Martin. Going for another one, are we? Yet another spin for the Minardi. Not been a great race for the Minardi team. And I think team boss Michael Gillespie must be uh, pretty ready to uh, disappear and go home. But if Brundle finishes the race, they still get the prize money, of course, for finishing a Grand Prix. So from Brundle's point of view, just keep going. Doesn't matter if you're in last place. Captain Senna in the McLaren, still going strong. So an absolutely terrific run thus far as Mauricio Gujamin is going wheel to wheel with Brundle. He now laps him. And that's uh, JJ Leto getting slightly sideways in the Monteverdi. He runs wide. And he, he's still there in the final points paying position, don't forget. So Leto is keeping Monteverdi in the points and in the running for a championship point. They haven't got one so far this year. But JJ Leto running well. He was up in as high as fifth position at one stage, don't forget. So JJ Leto really doing a great job here in the Belgian Grand Prix as Mika Hakkinen continues to run through on lap 40 of 44. There will be just four laps to go at the end of this one. At which point everybody that is motoring around the circuit will be classified as a finisher even if they don't manage to come home in the position they're currently in. And there's Nelson Piquet. Still a handy driver. Snapped up by Arrow's BMW for next year. It's the BMW connection that made it so attractive to PK. Having already won a title in BMW Power. In fact, he's won uh, the 1983 Formula 1 World Championship with the Brabham team when they had BMW Power. For next year, they're going to have Ilmore Power. Which is uh, going to be a, a new outlet for Formula 1. But the Ilmore engine has a lot of very intelligent men behind it. Mika Hakkinen in the Brabham. We talked about him, so we felt, well, let's go and get him on screen. Just eight seconds behind Senna, who is just taking it easy. He doesn't have to push. He's letting that gap come down between himself and Hakkinen, but he doesn't need to force himself into any mistakes. He can just keep it together. He's a minute ahead of PK, eight seconds ahead of Hakkinen. So there's no major hurry up for Ayrton Senna. There he is. By comparison, Warwick. Oh... Just so casually drifts the car around in front of Ayrton Senna. Tries to catch the car as he gets back onto the course. And that was so close for Hakkinen. So that's going to delay Hakkinen a little bit. But Warwick gets on. And that's why he was trying to get on so quickly. Because there's Leto. He didn't want to lose another point to JJ Leto. But four laps to go. Senna leads. Hakkinen second. PK third. From Gujamin, Alboreto, Modena, De Cesaris, Mansell, Warwick and Leto. And I'm not going to say anything that could potentially jinx any of the cars in the top six. Oh, that's one of them already jinxing itself. That's the Cesaris. Oh, I don't believe it. A water leak on the Lotus as the Cesaris was on course for seventh place. But it turns out that they were going to lose a podium anyway. So the Cesaris in the Lotus is going to park up. That is disastrous. At least it brings Patrese and the Williams back into the points in 10th uh, position. But that's devastating bad luck for Andrea De Cesaris. Yet again, the Italian is out of joy. And now the lead Lotus becomes Derek Warwick in 8th position ahead of Leto in 9th. And Ricardo Patrese in the Williams, who is now in 10th position. And there goes Schumacher! He actually strikes the wall. And is that Alboreto going off? Yes, it is. So Alboreto goes off trying to avoid Schumacher. Now, what's Alboreto going to lose in terms of positions? Nothing, because Modena and Mansell are still quite a long way back. So again, very lucky. I wonder if that water leak from the Cesaris is causing a few problems for a few of the cars out there. So that is a real problem. And now Ratzenberger going off in his Reynard. He gets going again, doesn't damage the car. And that is Modena in the Ferrari trying to close up on him to put a lap on the Reynard. But both Ferraris are going to be finishers now whether they finish the race or not because they will be classified as finishers which is great news for Ferrari they needed that 
And so Stefano Modena tucks up again behind the Reynard of Roland Ratzenberger. Here's Nelson Piquet running in third position. The Benetton is a minute back and Patrese goes off again. Oh, Ricardo. He just about catches it this time. And he manages to save the car before he concedes that point to Eric Bernard. But someone of Patrese's ability should not be binning it. That point on the circuit. Modena comes around. That's Hakkinen. Hakkinen in the Brabham. I think he's gone off in exactly the same place Prost did. Yes, he did. Yes, he has. But he should be able to get that car back on the road again by comparison. So Brabham does get going. Uh, sorry, Hakkinen in the Brabham does get going again and he saved second place. But that takes the pressure off for Senna because he was being caught by Hakkinen. Now Hakkinen has well and truly gone off the road and recovered in second place. So uh, that definitely takes the pressure off as Ayrton Senna comes through to begin lap 43 out of 44. Two laps to go as Mansell locks up into La Source. So it's not going to be too long before Senna puts a lap on the Ferrari, but they don't care about that. A sixth and a seventh place finish for Ferrari gives them points. So it's going to be a thrilling encounter right to the end as here's Hakkinen trying to knit his way through the bus stop chicane. A good half a minute back now from Ayrton Senna. But second place is still on the cards and that's Bernard. Whoops, that could have been so much worse. But uh, Patrese is 10th, Bernard is 11th, Schumacher is 12th ahead of Ratzenberger and Brundle. And they are the last remaining runners in the race. So Bernard and Schumacher just a couple of places outside the points. So that is uh, pretty dramatic stuff as here comes PK to start his 43rd lap. A minute behind the race leader Ayrton Senna. And Piquet actually sets the fastest lap of the race. There you go. A 2 minute point four 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 for Nelson Piquet. Fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So that will snatch him a bonus point if nobody beats it in these last two laps. I don't think Ayrton Senna cares one bit about the fastest lap of the race. He just wants to bring it home in first position. And so far, so good for the McLaren. But Ayrton Senna, a genius at his craft. He's had such a bad luck year in 1990. Hopefully this is the one that kickstarts his championship attack again. He had second position on the road at the Hungarian Grand Prix and got that job done. There was a second place that got taken away from him on a technical a technical issue for uh, McLaren earlier on in the year. But there goes Mansell through into seventh position ahead of Ayrton Senna, who is about to start his final lap. Do not trip over that Reynard Ayrton. And in fact, Ratzenberger very nearly tripped up. Oh, Mansell's just spun off in front of him. So Manson and the Ferrari spins off right in front of Ayrton Senna and not for the first time at that corner. And Modena has come into the pits in the Ferrari. What's going on? I'm not sure why Modena's pitting. He doesn't seem to have any damage or anything. But Modena, the Ferrari team, I think they were just trying to be circumspect about that car coming into the pits. But Modena and Mansell, the Ferraris, hit self-destruct in the final lap. So Modena is going to come out just ahead of Derek Warwick, I think. Warwick is going to be pushing it into the first corner, but Modena should get there first. And what about Mansell? Well, he recovers in ninth place behind Leto. And Hakkinen's in the pits. What's Hakkinen in the pits for? Oh, he's got low fuel. Now, this could be a repeat of what we saw at the Hungara ring. Hakkinen's got low fuel. What about Senna? Now, Senna has got just under a lap's worth of fuel left to go. Now, surely that should just be enough to get him to the end of the Grand Prix, but Senna's going to be pushing it. We saw all of the top three drivers pulling off at the end of the Go Bobby at UK Cup race. PK gets another new fastest lap in. Two minute four point, uh, two minute point four three seven. So another new fastest lap. Mansell has recovered, by the way. He is now in 10th position, so he's dropped behind Patrese in the Williams. But Senna's still going strong. And on this, the last lap, the McLaren is just trying to get through to the end of the race. 0.4 of a lap. Which is, I think, about what's left of this lap. He's in the final sector. 0.3 of a lap. And he's just gone faster than he has gone in the second sector. But Senna is just hoping to get home. 44 seconds ahead of Mika Hakkinen, who's had to make a splash and dash to get through to the end of the Grand Prix. But Senna should be okay to cross the line at the front of the Belgian Grand Prix. Although, looking at that, it's odious. 
Is he going to make it? Three or four corners to go. And the tank is running on empty. Can he make it? He gets on the throttle. And he's going to do it. Senna wins the Belgian Grand Prix. But only just. He literally runs the tank to the bone. And then pulls off at La Source. That is incredible. Ayrton at Senna wins the Belgian Grand Prix. On fumes. So McLaren are victorious again at last. And Senna's car comes to a stop. Modena gets sixth for Ferrari. Warwick seventh. JJ Leto in the Monteverdi is eighth. Three points for the Monteverdi team in the Constructors' Championship. Patrese and Mansell race for the line. But Patrese gets ninth. Mansell gets tenth. And Michael Schumacher pulling off before he gets to the finish. He was out of fuel. He couldn't make it. So Schumacher does not make it to the end of the Grand Prix, I'm afraid. And Bernard is going to lose 11th. That's so gut-wrenching for Schumacher because he would have taken the place away. And there is Hakkinen coming through. Let's see if we can pick him up in second place. There is Hakkinen. So Hakkinen in the Brabham does come through to take second position. He's quite lucky. PK is going to come through for third place. But Bernard is coming to a stop. He's not going to be 11th. I think that's going to go to Ratzenberger now. So PK is going to be there in third position on the podium. There's Gujamin. He's going to come through in fourth position. And Gujamin very nearly striking Bernard's car. So Bernard and Schumacher both out of the race. So where's Ratzenberger? Oh, he's pulling off. He's got a throttle problem. So I think Ratzenberger's already finished the race. I do apologize. Well, Senna is victorious. Both Ferraris come home in the points. Senna wins the Belgian Grand Prix from Hakkinen and Piquet. What a, what a race it's been here at Spa. Absolutely astonishing and an absolutely phenomenal Grand Prix here at Spa. Ayrton Senna and McLaren are back to the top. Hakkinen is second from PK third. Gujamin is fourth in the Leighton House from Alberetto in the Arrows. Stefano Modena in the Ferrari from Derek Warwick in the Lotus. The Monteverdi of JJ Leto is eighth from Ricardo Patrese in the Williams. Nine different teams in the top nine places. And Mansell in the Ferrari is tenth from Bernard, Schumacher, Ratzenberger and Martin Brundle. Classified as a finisher, even though he didn't make it, was Andrea De Cesaris. Then the retirements. Martini with an engine failure. Crashes for Berger, Fernandez, and Ivan Capelli. Gearbox for Frentzen. A big shunt between Nanini and Chiva put them out. Gearbox again for Thierry Boutsen. A throttle problem for Jean Alessi. A crash for Nicola Larini. And a crash for Alain Prost as well. Some very dramatic races there. Nelson Piquet with the fastest lap of the race in the Benetton. But what a dramatic end to the Belgian Grand Prix. And it's been an absolute thriller. Next time out, it is the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. And it's going to be an absolute thriller because it's high speed and it will all be about reliability where the engines are going to be absolutely stretched to their limit. I'm Jake Sanson. Hope you've enjoyed the 1990 Belgian Grand Prix. See you at Monza.